Hello, my name is Rick Pearson, and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. We're currently in our podcast studio due to COVID-19 lockdown restrictions, and this Bible study podcast studio is where we answer multiple questions from across the nation every Thursday at 7 p.m. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with multiple questions and evidence that demands a verdict. Welcome. My wife Karen and I would like to welcome you back to Prophecy USA. And Karen, this is our second Q&A program addressing some of the questions that, that come up on our podcast. Yes, we have lots of questions. We have tons of questions and we want to share them with our TV audience because if those folks are asking questions on our podcast, we wonder how many in the TV audience would like to hear those questions and have them answered. Exactly. Uh, you know, in the previous shows, we've looked at 53 descriptions of a Latter-day nation called Babylon the Great, and of course, America meets every description. And we'll find out today that some people think that America's rise to power is just a coincidence. But our research team at Prophecy USA are convinced that America's role in Bible prophecy is absolutely no coincidence. And many qu Christians also think that religion should not take part or have any part whatsoever in government nor in legislation. However, do you know that government is a concept mandated by God? In fact, it's one of the ways we can read the prophetic time clock as it relates to Bible prophecy. A recent slogan in the last presidential election was entitled, Battle for the Soul of Our Nation. However, we at Prophecy USA are asking this question, what exactly is working through the soul of our nation? Mm -hmm. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with some answers to those questions. And many more. And many more. Stay tuned. <music> 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759 or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. Hey folks, have you ever been witnessing to somebody and you just can't remember verses or recall the eight providential nations in scripture, let alone how America meets all 53 descriptions of the seventh nation in Bible prophecy? Well now Prophecy USA has a free app and every TV program, podcast, and all 53 descriptions of America's role in Bible prophecy will be in the palm of your hand. Together with our study guide, you can study to show thyself approved at any time, any place, and at any given moment. You can even upload the app onto your friend's phone or iPad and let them find out for themselves where this generation fits on God's prophetic time clock. To get the free app, go to prophecyusa.org. And for a donation of $20 or more, we will include a 100-page study guide boldly proclaiming America's role in Bible prophecy. We have multiple comments and questions coming in, don't we, Karen, we from do. our podcast group. 
So let's get right to it. Okay. And what was the first question? So from Bill, he says, I like your program and I agree with your thesis that the USA is likely Mystery Babylon, as described in the book of Revelation. It seems to me that preachers of the Word of God should stay out of partisan politics and instead concentrate directly on being the Lord's servants, living the gospel, and addressing the moral issues facing the nation. Jesus never preached partisan politics, neither pro-Roman or pro-Jewish nationalists, for example, the Pharisees and Sadducees. But he told the truth. Neither the apostles, Peter, John, Paul, or James did either. I think ministries involved in politics is wrong. Okay. Um, Bill has, Bill has a, an attitude that a lot of Christians have. And Bill thinks that ministers and Christians should not be involved in politics, that they're, that they're wrong. Um, and I'm going to ask, I'll ask Bill this. Was Joseph wrong when he consulted the Pharaoh of Egypt? Was Moses wrong when he confronted the Pharaoh again 400 years later? Was David wrong when he accepted Goliath's challenge to fight? Goliath represented the nation of the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Was Samuel wrong when he anointed David as king? Was Elijah wrong when he called down fire on Jezebel's government-sanctioned priests of Baal worshipers? Think about this. Was Isaiah wrong when he prophesied the destruction of 12 countries surrounding Israel? Was Jeremiah wrong when he warned King Zedekiah of coming judgment? Was Zechariah, or not Zechariah, but was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wrong when they refused to bow to the government mandates of ancient Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar? Was Daniel wrong when he counseled King Nebuchadnezzar? Was John the Baptist wrong when he confronted Herod? And was Jesus wrong when he said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations? Do the nations not include the leaders in the government of those nations? You know, according to scripture, it says, and let us consider one another to provoke one another unto love and to do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. James says, be doers of the word and not hearers, deceiving yourselves, being not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Going to church and sitting in a pew is a good thing, but unless you get off the pew and go act, it's, li- it's really not affecting any change in anyone, including yourself. You remember Romans uh, chapter 13, that God created governments. So don't you think he wants his children to be able to speak and influence government decisions? Jesus said, go ye into all the world. And that's what I believe everyone should be doing. In Babylon, it's filled with people, and we're to raise up a shout against the Babylonian deities that are influencing our government. The Bible instructs us to do that. So I hope I answered your question, Bill, by asking you those questions. What's our next question, hon? We have one from Diane. She says, I love your app and the fact that I have the scripture at my fingertips for witnessing to others. Does the current U.S. election have anything to do with Bible prophecy? I'm glad to hear you're using the app, Diane. Uh, We designed that for a witnessing tool, and that's exactly what it's for. Um, I believe that the election in America has everything to do with Bible prophecy because America is a providential nation and she's a covenant nation. Uh, Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Before God judged Israel, The prophet Jeremiah wept for the nation. Jeremiah 23 says they prophesied in Baal 
and they caused my people of Israel to err. They committed adultery, they walked in lies, and they strengthened also the hands of evildoers. The real question is how will your vote affect you? Have you strengthened the hands of evildoers mm -hmm. who have a platform that supports bail worship and abortion and immorality? So your vote really decides not only who gets into power, but you personally will answer for what they do with that power. Remember, Joshua said, choose you this day who you will serve, but what have you chosen? You know, there's the two descriptions in Babylon is she has written warnings in scripture not to partake in her sin, and she has verbal warnings not to partake in her plagues, and that's talking to the people of God that are within Babylon. She has prophets within her before her destruction, warning the people not to participate. If you vote people into power that wants a platform that opposes God, you are sanctioning that. Mm -hmm. That's serious stuff very serious stuff and God is watching we'll be right back after this message with more questions the United Nations has a 2030 agenda the World Economic Forum has a great reset the COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything, together with our study guide and free app, Prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. Welcome back, folks. We've got more questions than we know what to do with, <laughs> Karen. That's true, I know. You've got a question, I believe it's from Connie. I have. She asks, what do you see the effects of the current election as being, and how will it affect our future going forward? That's a very good question. Uh, you know, America is not just another country. Right. She's a covenant nation. In Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, when a covenant nation stays within that realm, she's going to have blessings poured on her. But when she gets into Reve when she gets into verse 16 through 25, she's going to pull down cursings on her. Right in Deuteronomy 28. Just think of her blessings from the founding fathers. Uh, lis listen to these descriptions of America. She's a providential nation raised up by God. She's the seventh of eight providential nations. She's a mystery. She appears before the Antichrist and the ten nations emerge. She's recognized by the world as a symbol of a woman. This is just not a normal country, the United States of America. She's the wealthiest of all nations. She trades with the merchants at her deep water ports and she trades 27 products. She's even traded in slavery and the souls of men. She makes the merchants of the earth rich through the abundance of her delicacies and she has a world currency. She's the greatest military in the world, and her military rules over the seven mountains of the earth. She has wisdom and knowledge above all others, and she's, but she's proud and haughty and says in her heart, I sit a queen and shall see no sorrow. Those are 16 of the first 53 descriptions of this Latter-day nation called Babylon the Great. Right. So the effects of the election are going to be incredible when it comes to the platforms 
that those people take in the laws that they enact in the nation. But look what happens when Babylon falls. It says she falls spiritually in God's eyes. She is literally driven into darkness. She embraces ancient Babylonian religions, including enchantments, paraphernalia, uh, necromancy, mediums, stargazers. She has Satan worship and witchcraft in her. She's a world leader in pornography and a world leader in selling pornography. 26th description, it says that she's drug-induced. And 28th description says that she becomes a debtor nation, not a lender. Those are all government policies that will either bless a nation or bring a nation into cursing or under a curse. So we believe that this election will determine the prophetic future of the nations, not only of America, but the world. It's not a vote for red or blue. It's a vote for the works of the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness based on party platforms. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was told by the Lord to put a yoke around his neck and he warned Zedekiah to stop sacrificing children to Baal and they laughed at him. Another prophet by the name of Hananiah came. This is in Jeremiah 28.10. And he took the yoke off of Jeremiah's neck and he broke it. And he said, God won't judge Israel. She's a covenant nation. God's going to bless Israel. And Jeremiah said, he went to the Lord and the Lord spoke to him. And he says, Jeremiah, Hananiah has not stood in my presence. He's not received my counsel. He's not delivered my word to the nation, but he spoke presumptuously. He spoke something from his heart, but it didn't come from the heart of God. And in verse 17 of Jeremiah 28, it says, So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Now they laughed at Jeremiah. In fact, they threw him into a cistern until Babylon came, ransacked the temple, and killed King Zedekiah's children in front of him. That's the king that, Zedekiah, that Jeremiah went to and prophesied. Yes. And he would not stop sacrificing children. So then they killed Zedekiah's children in front of him, and they burned out his eyes because he refused to stop the nation from performing child sacrifice. 2 Kings 25, 7 confirms that. And Zedekiah learned the hard way. Whoso sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. So the question is, will we learn from Zedekiah's example, or will we learn the hard way? Israel's a covenant nation, and so is America. And to whom much is given, much is required. Now, God promised in his word to send prophets into Babylon the Great. In fact, that's the 49th description. I will surely fill thee with men as with caterpillars. And the USA plays a pivotal role in Bible prophecy. In 610 BC, Jeremiah said, you've strengthened the hands of evil men. And every believer should know we are all individually responsible for who we vote for and how we speak. You can speak life or you can speak death with your tongue. You can invoke blessings on your children or you can provoke judgment. And the spiritual leadership should, should be warning people in the churches to support party platforms that embrace biblical protocol. You know, my dentist made a statement to me in Canada, and he said, you know, when I look at the choice between parties to vote for, it's like, it's like voting on which terminal disease you'd like to die from. <laughs> Sometimes the choices are slim, but you still have to look at those platforms and choose you this day who you will serve. These are serious times, folks, in America and around the world, but stay tuned because the next questions are going to give you some incredible information on exactly what you get to choose that is coming to America.
The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. Welcome back, folks. Karen has another question for us. I do. Doreen Came in from wrote Doreen. in. Doreen? Yes, and she said, Hi, Rick and Karen. I love your podcast, Bible Study. I have learned so much concerning covenant and America's role in Bible prophecy. What do you see coming in America before all of the prophecies concerning Babylon are completed? Wow, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's a question that I asked Oral Roberts six months before he died when I was at his house. And I said, Brother Roberts, what do you see coming in America? And Brother Roberts thought for a second and he said, Rick, I see a division coming, a separation, a separation between light and darkness. And he said, these secular humanists are not going to come to God, Rick. I think they're going to harden their hearts just like Pharaoh did when Moses warned him. And just like during the days of Noah, they would not listen to the warnings. And I find that interesting because a scripture actually confirms that. God's plan for both, both sides of the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, Jeremiah said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We already know that Babylon will fall into darkness, and that's description number 17 in Isaiah 47. Then in Revelation 18, 18, 2, it says, Fallen, fallen, Babylon has fallen, become the habitation of every devil and foul, unclean spirit. The spiritual kingdoms of light versus darkness are happening right now. So does this verse pertain to the election, to choose you this day whom you will serve? Remember in description number 30, Babylon is a nation that has a large amount of God's people within her. And currently the U.S. has the largest amount of Christians in any nation of the world. So the question is, what should we be doing when we see the darkness come? What should you as an individual be doing? What stand should you be taking as we watch this happen in our nation? So Rick, we had a question from Chris. Chris says, I believe your teaching is a true interpretation and America is definitely in scripture. My question is, what should we be doing to prepare for the rapture and America's coming judgment? That is a great question. It is. And it's one that I ask myself all the time. <laughs> what should we be doing? We be we're right. on television and we're trying to warn people. You know, Paul said in Ephesians 6, 19, as for me, that my utterance may be given unto me, that I might open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, and therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. In 2 Timothy 2 and 3, it says, Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You know, Paul says to be an ambassador, Timothy's talking about being a soldier. Right. When you're an ambassador, you represent another nation. You're not an ambassador in your own nation. You're an ambassador in another nation. And there's a book of protocol that you live by. Definitely. You, don't, you don't get to express your own opinion. You only express the opinion that's in this book. And recently when I was uh, on Facebook, uh, 
I have no idea who wrote this poem, but it's something that I wanted to share with the TV studio audience. And it's called, I Am a Soldier. And this is what every Christian in North America should be doing. This statement, I am a soldier in the army of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the word are my weapons of warfare. I've been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I'm a volunteer in this army, and I'm enlisted for eternity. I'll either retire in this army at the rapture or die in this army, but I will not get out, sell out, be talked out, or pushed out. I'm faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable, and if my God needs me, I'll be there. If he needs me in the Sunday school to teach the children, work with the youth, help adults, or just sit and learn, he can use me because I am there. I am a soldier. I'm not a baby. I do not need to be pampered, petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I am a soldier. No one has to call me to remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I'm a soldier. I'm not a wimp. I'm in place, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, food, cards, candy, or give me handouts. I do not need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside, and I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into his army, I had nothing, and if I end up with nothing, I will still come out ahead, and I will win. My God has and will continue to supply all my needs. I am a conqueror. I will always triumph. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Devils can't defeat me. People can't delude me, weather can't weary me, sickness can't stop me, battles can't beat me, and money can't buy me. Governments won't silence me, and hell can't handle me because I'm a soldier. Even death can't destroy me, for when my commander calls me from his battlefield, he will promote me to captain and then allow me to rule with him because I am a soldier. You know, folks, that's the word that I want to leave with you today from Prophecy USA. We are soldiers in an army, and it's time to stand up, raise up a shout, and stand up for what we believe is coming in our world. Yes, there's been a, lawn, a line drawn in the sand. There's a line drawn in the sand, and that's where we need to be. So I appreciate that question. This is Rick and Karen Pearson from Prophecy USA. We're out of time, and we're reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people believe. See you next week. God Bye bless folks. you.